Okay, so these are all alcohols questions. They are multiple choice and they are past paper questions from old AQA A-level chemistry papers. So when the question comes up, I suggest you pause it, you try to answer it. And when you've had a go and you've come up with an answer, review following through the video and see how you've done. So let's start with this question. And here we're looking for an alcohol that can be oxidized by acidified potassium dichromate 6, but cannot be dehydrated by heating with concentrated sulfuric acid. Now I'm going to start by drawing out the four structures, and we have those here. And from there, I'm going to take it a step further forward, and I'm going to classify these alcohols. So if I take a look, I can see A and C are both tertiary. Uh, the carbon that the OH is bonded to has three carbons connected to it. I then have B is a primary alcohol and D is a secondary alcohol. So if I then consider which of these can be oxidized by acidified potassium dichromate 6, that dismisses the tertiary alcohols. They cannot be oxidized by acidified potassium dichromate 6. Primary can be oxidized to an aldehyde, secondary can be oxidized to a ketone. So what we then need to think about is which cannot be dehydrated by heating with concentrated sulfuric acid. And what we can see on D is that there is an H on the C that the OH is on. And that is therefore allowed to be removed. Whereas when you consider um, B, the carbon where the H needed to be is surrounded by C's. So it simply can't happen. So the correct answer, because it's the one that cannot be dehydrated, is B. Next question. And we're just taking on here some of the key ideas about ethanol. Now, if I start by drawing ethanol, and I can write out the molecular formula C2H4O. Now, immediately, that tells us that D is incorrect. An aldehyde is CnH2NO. The plus one shouldn't be there. If I then look at the empirical and molecular formula, well, I've written the molecular formula out there, and that cannot be divided down any further. There's one oxygen, so it remains as C2H4O. So that cannot be the correct answer. If I then move on to B, and I look at the higher boiling point than ethanol, well, absolutely not, because ethanol exhibits hydrogen bonding. And an aldehyde will only show permanent dipole-dipole forces. Hydrogen bonding is stronger, so the boiling point is higher. You could have actually got straight to A and hopefully remembered that in Tollens reagent, an aldehyde forms a silver mirror. So you've got to the answer in a different way there as well. Okay, next question. And this is alcohols, but it's tying in with reacting masses and it's tying in with percentage yield. So you need to do the reacting masses question. There's really no way around it. Start by drawing out the table. I have the M, the MR, the N and the ratio. I put my two species in. I've got my propene and my propan 2 all And then I start to put the figures in. So I was told that I started with 50 grams of propan 2 all I'm also told its MR is 60. So I can work out that that means I've got 0 0.83 moles. Now you could write the equation out, but hopefully you would recognize that one mole of propene makes one mole of propan 2 all So there's a one-to-one -one ratio. And if there's a one-to-one -one ratio, 0.83 moles will require 0.83 moles of propene to make it. Now I've been given the MR of that. So I can now calculate the M, which is 35 grams. So we should theoretically make 35 grams, but we only make 30. So we do the percentage yield, and that comes out when we do 30 divided by 35 multiplied by 100 as 85.6%. Now, we don't have that, but we have a rounded version of it. So the correct answer is D, 86%. Next question. 
and we're looking here at where we can get more than one product when we dehydrate these alcohols. <clears throat> so when we dehydrate the alcohol, we lose an OH and we lose an H from a neighboring carbon. So if I do that with propan 1 ol I'm only going to end up with propene. So it's not that one. Similarly, propan 2 ol I will make propene again. It will work and it will make exactly the same product. If I go to C, what I see here is that I will make pent 1-ene. And if I go to D, I see that I will make pent 2-ene. Now, I can't make another structural isomer of this. So we're clearly thinking about a different type of isomer. And we're thinking here, about geometrical isomers, stereoisomers, and there is an alternative because at the moment what I have is Z pent 2 ene, but I could also have E pent 2 ene. So the correct answer is D. Next question. So we're thinking about a range of different chemical reactions here. What cannot be produced by the oxidation of propan 1-ol? Well, CO2 definitely can because oxidation at its most simple form is combustion. We're burning in oxygen and that makes CO2 and water when we burn a hydrocarbon or in this case, an alcohol. For D, well, going from a primary alcohol, I can go to a carboxylic acid. And I've got the equation here. If you remember, the O in square brackets is the oxidizing agent. That's how we represent it. It's actually acidified potassium dichromate six. Now the condition here is reflux. But if we didn't do this under reflux, we would make propanol. And we've got this equation here. So that leaves us with the correct answer, which is B, propanone and a ketone is made by the oxidation of a secondary alcohol. For that reason, we cannot produce it from propan 1-ol.